you are pretty much at a point where you have had a reasonable overview of what atomic level protein structures look like you also know what atomic level uh, dna uh, and rna structures look, look like uh, you have seen a lot of animations which gives you a visual idea of what is going on inside the cell and uh, today i'll be focusing mostly on the uh, less on the structure i hope and more on the uh, stability folding uh, aspects of proteins because uh, as uh, i have repeated again and again the protein uh, is the last stage of uh, information transfer in the central dogma and proteins make up a huge chunk of our uh, of the macromolecules inside the cell and they provide a lot of structural and functional roles which keep keep us alive now before i go into protein uh, folding and stability a few reminders and uh, some homework so i would encourage all of you to go uh, to the website of the protein data bank you just have to type rcsb protein data bank in google and it will take you to the protein data bank in fact for a minute or so i'll take you over there so that you understand how important this is now this is a repository which has existed for almost 30 40 years and uh, it collects uh, in a uh, all the structures which have been solved through multiple techniques the table on the left shows you x ray crystallography uh, nuclear magnetic resonance the current new hot field of uh, cryo electron microscopy hybrid methods which include modeling methods and others and it tells you the large number of structures which have been deposited by researchers all over the world and these atomic structures are actually maintained uh, uh, in in the protein data bank and the number is approximately uh, this is a little old it's about 1.8 lakh structures uh, as of today and on the right hand side um, shows from 1990 Uh, when pretty much data and models were being collected till about 2017 uh, the growth of the number of structures which are deposited in the protein data bank and uh, you can see this very interesting uh, idea that nuclear magnetic resonance which was a very popular technology till about uh, 2005 there is a sudden drop in structures because nmr ha uh, has this limitation that it cannot really solve uh, Um, structures of proteins and nucleic acids beyond a certain size after a certain size the nmr spectrum which is collected becomes very crowded and is very difficult to decipher and extrapolate to atomic models so nmr uh, as a technique uh, for structure determination especially of uh, large complex macromolecules uh, is going down but uh, crystallography x ray crystallography continues to be a very popular technique with numbers growing and you can see this dotted line over here which is a new uh, new structural technique uh, called cryo electron microscopy and that that is literally taking over the world for those of you who want to do structural biology in the future there is a good chance that you will never do nmr for structural biology 80% of you will not do standard basic x ray crystallography and most of you will end up doing cryo electron microscopy so let's just go to the protein data bank page uh, this is the protein data bank page rcsb.org and uh, you can see that uh, it's a very active page there's a molecule of the month and with 1.8 lakh molecules and multiple structures being submitted every day into the protein data bank there are plenty of uh, structures to display there are a lot of exciting structures over here polymerases viruses very interesting shapes and sizes which i've shown you in the last lecture a good place apart from just looking at structures which is something you can do is to go to the learns uh, module over here so once you go to the learn module it takes you to this fairly recent module called uh, protein data bank 101 and 101 as you know is the generic term used for a basic course for example the course you are going through right now is a 101 course and you can use this to uh, go through uh, biological themes you can explore for example let's look at 101 resources by biological theme so you have all these themes uh, which is, which are here and uh, the coronavirus will be part of the themes over here let's look at something called biological energy for example and it will take you to all these molecules and remember these are atomic structures and what you are literally doing is uh, uh, looking at molecules their models in a representative manner but these are real molecules which have been solved these are not models for example this is a famous atp synthetase which is sitting on the mitochondrial membrane 
and the shape and the size is very, very important to generate ATP. And uh, there are subtleties over here, which, which you will understand when you do uh, a more higher level course on uh, structural uh, biology. Okay, so lots and lots of resources over here. Uh, there is also a resource, which let me see if I can find immediately, which takes you to a model of a cell. And from that model of a cell, it, you can basically click different sections of a cell and get an idea of which proteins are there in which section of a cell. So I won't spend too much time over it. Uh, this is basically something you can explore. And again, this is really not part of your curriculum in terms of uh, exams. But uh, for those of you interested, I strongly encourage you to explore the protein data bank. All right. So from here, let's move on to uh, the rest of the course content. So very obviously, you now know that proteins as made by the ribosome are a string of amino acids. There are two major uh, secondary structures as defined in protein folding. They are alpha helices and beta sheets. And these two, along with different kinds of helices, which are more rare, uh, like a left-handed helix, a 310 helix, or uh, different twists of uh, the beta sheets, all come together along with terms to make a folded, sometimes compact, sometimes not so con compact structure. And multiple proteins, sometimes the same protein, like in the case of hemoglobin, sometimes uh, hundreds of proteins can come together to form large quaternary protein complexes. And remember all of these coming together in a folded states, is basically intended to make a functional entity, a tool which can be used in the cell. And uh, you have seen many, many examples of uh, what the shapes and sizes of each functional molecule looks like. Again, this is a ball and stick representation of amino acids in the cell. And uh, here is something I've already talked about. Uh, the only connectivity between the linear polypeptide chain is disulfide bonds. And the additional thing which I told you is that there are turns in proteins and Proline and glycine are favorites at the term. I say favorites, I don't see, I, say, I, I, never, I have never said essential, okay? Any amino acid can be in a term, but proline and glycine do provide some additional advantages because of their properties. I've also introduced the idea of uh, dihedral angles and the concept of phi and psi, and told you very clearly that four atom, atoms define a dihedral angle, uh, not three, uh, and uh, phi and psi are, have the ability to move, but the omega angle is usually a rigid angle because of the partial nature. The electron cloud is dispersed over the CONH uh, bond, making a partial double bond over here. So this is a rigid bond, uh, which doesn't move. It's usually at 180, uh, which, which doesn't change beyond a single flat plane, uh, an angle of 180 degrees. And I told you a lot about hartz fee approximations and how uh, G. N. Ramachandran did two things. He of course made the Ramachandran map, and he also uh, uh, gave a very nice model for collagen based on fiber diffraction pattern. These are the two things he is very famous for. Again, a repetition of the fact that uh, the CONH bond is uh, basically uh, uh, at, at a trans -config configuration with the R groups facing completely opposite to each other. You have to imagine this in three dimensions. The cis conformation is energetically unfavorable and also based on the hard sphere approximation, the R groups, for example, if you have a tryptophan here and an alanine over here, they will clash physically with each other. So cis uh, peptide bonds are almost unknown. The only exception being, and again, we won't go into detail, being proline. Proline usually allows uh, uh, the main chain to be in, uh, in the cis conformation in about 20 to 30% of, of the cases. It's still not something very predominant. All right, so today, in addition to looking at the peptide bond, and I have told you this again and again, and this is important for your exams also, please uh, learn to draw nucleic acids, please learn to draw the polypeptide chain. Just draw four amino acids, one after the other, linked to each other, and uh, uh, draw the R groups, have an idea about the structure of uh, a few amino acids, uh, and practice drawing, because this really helps your brain to understand the different properties of these amino acids. So today's focus is on scales, specifically distances. And what is listed over here are the covalent bonds and approximate sizes for these covalent bonds. For example, a carbon-carbon bond is usually around 1.5 angstroms. And a carbon-carbon double bond is shorter and stronger 
1.3 angstroms takes more energy to break this bond. Here are uh, you length units for the carbon nitrogen, the carbon oxygen, and the carbon oxygen a double bond. And shown in this picture over here are the distances for these uh, angles. For example, in a peptide, the carbon carbon is around 1.52, close to the uh, generic length of 1.54. The carbon oxygen double bond is the CO over here, which is part of the peptide uh, group, CONH. The CO is 1.23 angstroms, short. Uh, 1.3 angstroms over here, and also shown over here are, are the angles between these ang uh, between these atoms. And these angles are of course defined by uh, three uh, three atoms. Not they are not diagonal angles. Fine. Right? All right. So keep your eye on the basic idea of the length of bonds, and let's then move on to water. Now, water has very interesting properties and I'll touch upon these uh, near the end of uh, today's class. But more importantly, if you take water in solution, water molecules, independent water molecules are connected to each other via, via hydrogen bonds. And you saw in DNA structure and you also got a hint in protein structure, uh, especially secondary structure or tertiary structure, that hydrogen bonding is really very important to provide stability to nucleic acids, to proteins. And in pure water, single hydrogen, uh, single water molecule uh, usually is surrounded by, uh, in a dynamic manner, by uh, four other water molecules, okay? So the uh, electrons on, on the oxygen can form uh, hydrogen bonds uh, with, with the hydrogen on two opposing water molecules. And of course, the two protons on the water molecule can also independently form transient hydrogen bonds with oxygens in, in nearby water molecules. And this hydrogen bonding from, a, from the viewpoint of a biologist is very important because it provides stability to macromolecules and of course not necessarily macromolecules, all kinds of molecules when molecules are in, are in solution. And if you look at the size of this hydrogen bond, it's approximately around uh, three angstroms. The lengths here are given in nanometer rather than angstrom, so you have to multiply by 10. So it's a longer bond it's than a covalent bond and it's a bond which is fairly easy to break as compared to a, to a covalent bond. And water molecules, uh, liquid water for example over here, will have a dynamic breaking and rejoining of all these water molecules. And when you convert water into ice, this dynamic structure becomes a little more frozen with, the, with these bonds being fairly important in the, in the transition. I also told you a fair amount about the Ramachandran map. And you now have an idea of uh, torsional rotation about phi and psi. You also know that if you plot a three-dimensional protein structure in two dimensions, the three-dimensional space, which is represented by this uh, quadrant in a graph paper, quadrant one, two, three, and four, you realize that almost 60 to 70% of space cannot be occupied uh, based on phi psi angles simply because uh, there are clashes we we'll, uh, Ramachandran uh, theorized this as hard atom clashes, but we look at it in terms of energy these days. And there are only restricted areas in conformational space where phi psi angles are uh, possible and which represent uh, the two dimensional representation of a three dimensional reality, which is what is happening in proteins. And over on the right over here shows you the broad areas where the phi psi angles are for beta sheets, for three turn helices, for a normal right-handed alpha helix, for a left-handed alpha helix and so on and so forth, okay? Now, there are two special amino acids and in the middle are shown plots for a few hundred amino acids showing you uh, where the phi psi angles usually are in protein structures in general. You can see there are a few outside uh, outside the classical Ramachandra map. And part of the explanation for this is on the left, this is a Ramachandra map for glycine. If you take a polyglycine uh, stretch and you, you ask how much space can glycine occupy in phi size space, you realize that glycine, unlike any other amino acids, can occupy much more conformational space. So you have this symmetric structure with glycine able to occupy uh, conformational space in let's this quadrant on top, on top right, and this quadrant on bottom right, which 
any amino acid including alanine with a side chain cannot simply because the the side chains will clash with each other if you have anything larger than a proton as a as a side chain also interesting is proline you'll see compared compared to uh, other amino acids all the amino acids uh, alanine tryptophan tyrosine glutamate you do not see any dots for a polyproline on the right hand side of of uh, the ramachandra map so proline is very strongly restricted because of its side chain being uh, bonded to the main chain and uh, it's restricted very much uh, i don't exactly remember what this point is but probably 60 degrees in phi space and a slightly uh, broader range in psi space sorry this is phi space and this is psi space fine 